Hello, you're about to hear Good Morning Seminole, our monthly signature event. Please enjoy. Jason Siegel has been leading Greater Orlando Sports Commission for the past, I think, eight years. Under his leadership, they have hosted more than 400 events and were projected to drive more than $1.5 billion in economic impact between 2016 and 2023. I think many people in the room know him and know the incredible events that he and his team have brought here to help grow our sports tourism in the Greater Orlando area. Please join me in welcoming Jason Siegel. That short bio, I love it. That's good. Get right into it. Um, we've got a quick video. We've got a couple of them actually, but uh, we'll, we'll go with this one to get started. It's, uh, it's really a pleasure to be with you all. Rebecca, thank you and your leadership team. Appreciate the invitation this morning. Uh, Alan Bird and uh, many others who I know are the heartbeat of uh, this organization. So thank you all for the invitation. Um, Joel, thanks for sponsoring this morning. Always good to see you. And David Smith, uh, always good to see you. So thank you for joining us this morning. Um, we are really blessed at uh, the Greater Orlando Sports Commission uh, to have a number of uh, Seminole County representatives on our board. John Gillen is here, thank you John, and Frank Iapolo, <laughs> Kurt Esser, um, who have done uh, such a great job uh, being uh, a great influence for our organization. Um, we just signed a new five-year agreement with uh, Seminole County. We're really proud to work with uh, uh, Danny Trossett and Tricia and Guy and so many uh, of our uh, uh, great uh, uh, staffers at uh, Seminole County. But uh, of course, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank uh, Chairman Zembauer and Commissioners Constantine Herr Delari and uh, Lockhart, so I appreciate all of their support. Uh, we've been partners with Seminole County for uh, 32 years now, so great partnership driving events uh, into this community and, uh, and happy to do so. Um, also want to thank uh, great partners at uh, the Seminole County uh, Hoteliers, our CFHLA members. I know a number of them are here with us in the room today, so um, I, we'll dive right in. Um, again, also be remiss, um, and I don't think Kurt is here, but um, 
man, round of applause, Courtney Miller. If you don't know who Courtney Miller is, Hall of Fame uh, coach who's going uh, going to be inducted. 1,100 wins, right, John? I mean, it just 12, over, over, excuse me, over 1,200 wins, 1,250. Um, but just an incredible run uh, since the mid '90s uh, with our Raiders here in town. So, congrats to Courtney, and please nominate her for our Celebrating Women in Sports uh, event in the fall because uh, I'd be shocked if she's not a slam dunk uh, recipient. Um, sticking with uh, the NCAA, just a little bit of uh, housekeeping and some news as it relates to uh, Seminole County. Um, we have over a thousand student athletes coming from Division II. Uh, we're going to host six national championships here in Orange County and Seminole County. So if you are able to, um, definitely between the uh, dates of May 18th and 25th, get out to San Lando and Soldiers Creek. We're going to be hosting the D2 uh, national championships for softball and tennis. Uh, here in Seminole County and lacrosse and golf in uh, Orange County. So excited to be welcoming uh, uh, so many of those great student athletes to our community. Of course, you know, we're going to get to a lot of it, but uh, if you haven't been to our Orlando Pride match, we were there last night. That is a championship quality team. They are just killing it. Of course, they uh, train here in Seminole County. So congrats to uh, uh, Jared Dillon and, and so many of the folks there at uh, Orlando City and Orlando Pride. Uh, the aforementioned magic, of course, we need a win Friday night. So I know we're all rooting there. Solar Bears going to the second round of the playoffs. Valkyries. Uh, Valkyries uh, at the uh, end of their season here, so hopefully playoffs in their future. And also, if you're a big pickleball fan, which I know we have a lot of them, we were at the ribbon cutting in Winter Garden, so congrats to Mayor McCann and the team in Winter Garden. Um, the, uh, uh, what's Springs. Uh, Springs. Sorry. There we go. Jeez. <laughs> All right. I get like one of those. Uh, I get one, one mulligan, and, and I'm done. <laughs> Winter Springs uh, um, just opened up their uh, pickleball courts, but um, at the USTA, they're going to be having the, um, uh, the, the uh, our new team here, the Squeeze, is going to have an exhibit. Uh, they're going to have an exhibition uh, next Thursday as well. It'll be a busy week in sports here in our town, especially with the Magic knocking off the Cavaliers. So um, we'll look forward to all of that. I'm going to get into the presentation and, uh, and zip through a couple of quick notes. Um, interestingly enough, just a week ago, our state of the industry report came out. Um, Guy, I don't know, hopefully you saw this, but uh, uh, $52.2 billion that generates, uh, which, which in direct spending, which translates into $128 billion in spending across the United States. Um, if you look and find the, uh, the gold star at the top, uh, the state of Florida ranked number one. And uh, we're really proud to play a role in that as uh, Florida leads the way. Um, uh, our mission at the Greater Orlando Sports Commission, and, and certainly in partnership with all of our uh, 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 marketing, de destination marketing organizations, is um, uh, threefold. Um, bring and drive economic impact uh, to our partners here in the community. We work with over 45 venues. Uh, we'll show you the map here in a second. Um, second, to market the destination, um, and we are proud to be a regional organization marketing Seminole, Lake, Osceola, and Orange County, the city of Orlando. And then lastly, to make sure that we're providing and bringing great events for the residents of our community. So we're really proud to be able to do that. Um, a lot of different events, some of them are free, to, you know, free of charge, others uh, are, are not exactly free of charge, but a large range of opportunities for folks to come out and be part of what uh, we're trying to do um, in our community. The other thing that was really neat, uh, just about a month ago, we were joined by a lot of the uh, commissioners and, and leadership from Seminole County. Uh, uh, Orlando was named the number one sports destination in the country. So we're really, really proud uh, of that accomplishment. Um, not Dallas, not Vegas, not Atlanta, uh, not Denver, not Boston, but uh, Orlando. And that takes a, uh, a group effort, a collaborative effort 
um, folks that are egoless, that don't care about who gets credit, that are willing to come together, um, whether it's bidding on World Cup or bidding on uh, Olympic opportunities, and we'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute as we look to the future. The ability for everybody to get in the room, put their differences aside, to have Advent sitting next to Orlando Health, to have Disney sitting next to Universal, to have all of our great partners, Coca-Cola and Pepsi, in the same, you know, sitting right next to each other as we move forward as a community um, to continue to bolster our ecosystem and, and do what we can, of course, for the residents of our community. Um, a little bit of a video that uh, we have from uh, the press conference uh, at Disney uh, when they made the announcement that Orlando was number one. The city beautiful is now the number one ranked sports city for attracting and hosting events. This is awesome. The Sports Business Journal looked at 1,500 sporting events between January 2017 through December 2023 and Orlando came out on top. The number one ranked sports city. The top city in the country. The best city to host sports events in America. The number one sports city for attracting and hosting events. You see the sign right there, Orlando came out on top. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to ESPN Wide World of Sports at the Walt Disney World Resort. Wow, what an awesome day for Orlando. Around City Hall, we like to say these are the days we live for, and these are truly one of the days we live for and that we'll remember. I think we have absolutely grown into the sports destination in this country, and it's because of great collaboration and partnership we have between the various local governments, Go Sports, Florida Central Sports. We can host any event that the world can bring to us. I think we're the premier sports destination, and it's great to have third-party validation that we are exactly that. Now it's not bias, right? It's proven that Florida is where the world comes to play, that Orlando is uh, setting the mark. To be named, uh, you know, for this remarkable acknowledgement, it, it, it warms my heart. It is just tremendous to receive this accolade. Again, that puts us even more on the map and being here um, in this particular venue, which happens to be in Osceola County, by the way, um, it's just beyond words. It's just super exciting for the whole region, really. I was born and raised in Lake County. Uh, Lake County is a beautiful place to live, work, and play. And to have this announcement and include Lake County is just absolutely exciting. This is joyous, right? This is so much work behind the scenes by members of these teams that have been tireless advocates. And so having a day like this where the recognition um, comes in and we can shine a light on that work, it is a great, it's a great day, it's a great moment, um, and it should give us all a lot of energy to move forward and do more. But I think as a whole, the region of the four counties speaks a lot to what we're doing here in Central Florida and really the capital of sports tourism. There are so many opportunities through all the counties for different initiatives, not only can you do sports, but in your downtimes, you can come see the attractions, say in Orange County, Seminole County, Lake County, you can go see the natural Florida. So there's a whole lot of opportunities here in Central Florida that all of us are pushing forward, just not the sports, but the sports is the genesis, if you will, to bring everybody here. There's an awful lot of collaboration that goes into an award like today's where the Sports Business Journal, who has been the gold standard in our industry for almost 30 years now, uh, has recognized Orlando as the best city for hosting sporting events in the country. For Orlando to come out on top is a real um, honor, not only, of course, for the sports entities and the venues, uh, but so many of the industry leadership uh, positions in our community who have come together to help this become a reality. So uh, we're done looking uh, backwards. Uh, that, that's great. That was uh, Christmas past and Christmas present. Let's look to uh, Christmas future. A um, little bit of a look at uh, the map. Uh, like I mentioned, we're a regional sports commission, 45 plus venues uh, that we work with to bring events into the community. 
Um, real simple uh, process for us as it relates to the bid process itself, uh, evaluating opportunities and collaborating with our partners, bidding, creating, advocating. You can see all the different areas in which we spend a lot of time and energy. Uh, we've got members of our uh, development team here. Uh, Jordan Leida is with us from our team who's going to be uh, working closely with Brent Nelson and Elizabeth Calderelli and uh, Chase DeMaio is here from our uh, uh, corporate partnership team and Mike Kalinich as well. Um, we've got a small group, there's only 11 of us, but uh, we um, are able to get out into the marketplace and work uh, hand in hand uh, with Dan and his team to bring in Olympic opportunities and international uh, marquee eSport, uh, collegiate, and uh, about 70% of our business is youth and amateur. So uh, as we know, uh, so many of us parents and grandparents are in the room that are uh, driving our kids all over the United States uh, to play all kinds of sports. But that's, that's certainly uh, where the majority of our business is done. Um, we've had a good run. Um, we've uh, been bolstered by a number of uh, larger marquee events that have come into the market and uh, a little bit of a look at the economic impact that we've been fortunate enough to be able to drive now exceeding $500 million a year in economic impact uh, over the last couple of years. And we're set to probably be in that 450 to $500 million range this year as well. Some of the highlights of uh, a lot of the work uh, that we're doing and looking at and working with, um, you should know AAU is headquartered here down by Disney, so we have a, a constant running conversation with them about opportunities. ECNL, which has a long standing, uh, the girls uh, for more than 10 years and the boys for uh, three, four, five years uh, here in Seminole County. Uh, U.S. Youth Soccer, March Madness, we've hosted seven uh, basketball tournaments uh, over the last uh, 20 plus years. Uh, mentioned the NCAA championships that are coming. Uh, Wake and Water Ski out in Lake County, Big 12, big shout out to uh, our uh, UCF Knights and of course uh, some opportunities that we hope will come working with uh, their commissioner, Brett Yormark. Uh, Florida High School Sports, we host a number of their high school championships. Uh, tennis right now, right here in Seminole County. Um, we are working into the future, taking a look at, uh, in preparation uh, for the Paris uh, Summer Olympics. Uh, when you watch this summer, you'll see uh, in uh, marathon, uh, the uh, three women and two, hopefully three men who qualified here on the streets of Orlando that will compete in Paris. In addition to, we've hosted Paralympic swimming and fencing and a number of other sports uh, in our community and many of those uh, uh, athletes will go on to compete in Paris uh, this summer. I think the start date is somewhere mid-July. Um, LA 28, uh, Summer Olympics will come to US soil uh, in just four short years. So we're excited to host some of the preliminary and showcases around uh, those Olympic uh, opportunities. 200 plus nations will come to the US to compete and train. So we're looking forward to hopefully uh, welcoming some of those countries to base camp here in Seminole County. Long standing relationship with WWE. We've hosted three uh, uh, WrestleManias and uh, hopefully uh, a couple more of their products will be coming our way. Um, if you've been reading the uh, Orlando Business Journal, you know that there, uh, hopefully in the next month, there'll be some approvals on uh, funding for Camping World Stadium, for Kia, Stadium, uh, for Kia Center uh, as well. So uh, those are great venues for us to be hosting our WWE products in. Uh, great relationship and long-standing relationship with USA, uh, uh, U.S. soccer. Um, Brazil is going to play the U.S. men on June 12th. We have Copa coming downtown uh, the end of uh, June into July. And then Man City is going to be here at Camping World Stadium. So a great job by Steve Hogan and the folks at Florida Citrus Sports. Mentioned the marathon trials. Uh, FIFA World Cup, hopefully going to base camp a number of those teams that make uh, FIFA's World Cup uh, that is coming to the United States, Mexico, and Canada in 26. Um, a lot of LPGA events in town. And then for the rugby fans, and I know we have a few, um, Jordan, of course, for sure, um, in our crowd, but uh, we're looking at the 31-33 uh, Rugby World Cup which we'd love to bring here to town in addition to, uh, fingers crossed, um, U.S. soccer actually is going to pass 
on bringing the Women's World Cup here in 2027, but we'll be partners with them when they put their bid into FIFA to bring Women's World Cup here in 2031. So looking forward to that opportunity as well. Uh, in this last bid cycle, the NCA, uh, under new leadership, Charlie Baker, uh, who was the former governor of Massachusetts, has taken over uh, as uh, the, the lead on the NCAA, president of the NCAA. And uh, they used to have a four-year cycle for bidding on events. Um, no city was awarded more national championships than Orlando in the last cycle. Um, so that's great. That's old news. I look at my board and they're like, all right, what are we doing next? So what we're doing next is um, they shortened the bid cycle to two years. So it's going to be a 26, 27, 27, 28 bid cycle for the next rotation. And if all goes well, hopefully we'll be able to bring more NCA championships in that shorter window. Uh, so we're looking just a, a little bit ahead. Uh, as I mentioned, from 26 to 28, and hopefully we'll have a repeat of the amount of business that we're able to bring. Um, insanely competitive process. In the last bid process, the NCA put out 500 national championship bids, and uh, there were over 3,000 uh, individual bids for those 500 events. Uh, that was up from 1,800 bids in the cycle prior, and we expect about four to 5,000 bids for this next cycle that's coming up, uh, even despite the, the, the shortened window. Um, our team, and, and I think, you know, if I could leave you with a couple of thoughts for today, um, we're very community-minded. Um, every one of our um, uh, employees uh, on our team is active and involved in the community. It could be a passion project for themselves, something related to tourism, uh, but we're really proud of the work that we're doing collectively, thousands of hours donating our time into the community. If there are opportunities for us to get involved in a nonprofit that you're working with, please reach out. Um, the other thing that we are always talking about is adding board members. Um, remarkably, we, uh, we manage a, a group of 119 board members. Um, but honest, uh, when, when we're putting together packages, World Cup's a great example. We had 500 members of our local organizing committee. We had 76 individuals in human rights and another two dozen in sustainability. And it's not always just about uh, you know hotels and venues and and uh, and and driving a visitation. There are a lot of, a lot of other components when we put a bid together uh, as we go forward. So if you're interested in volunteering with us, we actually still have some shifts available for the D2 festival that's coming in a couple of weeks. So go to our website at Greater. Orlando Sports, if you're interested in volunteering or if your 18 plus uh, year old uh, uh, kids or college age kids are looking for volunteer hours, we'd love to have them at either of the four, uh, any of the four venues, but uh, really proud of the work that we do in the community. And with that, Rebecca, I am uh, about two minutes shy of the 845 mark. Um, I'm happy to answer questions, that's okay, yeah. Um, happy to answer any questions. Um, and uh, I appreciate all of your time. Thank you for all you do for our great communities, and it's an honor to be with you here this morning, but uh, happy to answer a question or two if there are. Let's go right to the UCF jacket. Let's go. <laughs> go Knights, go Knights, go Knights. Very strategic. I've been to a few games, sir. Yes, <laughs> yes. 110 home games in a row. Okay, so I'm a Jacksonville Jaguars fan and a season ticket holder. There's been talk that... Uh, Daytona Beach to Speedway, they're renovating the stadium, uh, TIA Bank Field, for two years. Do you have any insights on maybe the uh, Citrus Bowl or Camping World Stadium for the Jaguars to move over here in Orlando for two years? Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm breaking any news. Um, it's been you know, talked about in uh, a number of our local um, uh, news uh, uh, publications, but um, I think there is a chance. I think there's an opportunity, certainly. Um, their owner is going to uh, rebuild their stadium in Jacksonville. Um, we are going to go into a window where we're going to have a transition at Camping World Stadium uh, as we put the 400 plus million dollars into effect and do the upgrades to Camping World Stadium. Um, so I think it's going to be a bit of a need to thread the needle to some degree because you're going to have parts of Camping World online, offline, 
Um, we have to see how that matches up with construction plans in Jacksonville. I know that uh, Steve Hogan and Florida Citrus Sports and Alan Johnson and Craig Borkin at, uh, at Orlando venues, are they're all having those conversations both here at home to figure out what our schedule is going to look like and then ultimately how that layers in with what they're trying to do. So I think you'll see more news on the horizon. We've been uh, very forward about uh, wanting to see that happen, and we'd love to, uh, to ha have uh, NFL game, regular season games played here in Orlando. So hopefully it all comes to, play, it, it comes to fruition. Thank you, hello. Let's go, eSports, come on. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I am Danny Kelsey, and uh, I am opening a uh, eSports training arena for our youth targeted at the middle school and high school level. Uh, and one of the things when I was doing a lot of market research in whether or not this would be a good opportunity uh, in this area was taking a look at the Greater Orlando Commission's uh, site and seeing eSports on there. Ooh, awesome. Um, but of course, COVID uh, had some other plans, uh, yeah. I think. So I'm interested to hear what are the, what, you know, what's the outlook that you guys are thinking about as we t start talking about, you know, can we get Fortnite, <laughs> their championship World Series, things like that. I know Call of Duty in 2017 was a big one, but where, where are we going from here? Yeah, we, we can. Um, and I think that the, um, the industry, you're right, uh, obviously um, an interesting product, right? Because the ability to play at home and for, you know, millions of kids to, to not just kids, but uh, for young adults and adults that are gamers to get together and millions of people to watch Marshmallow at three o'clock in the morning or download the next iteration of Call of Duty or, 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 or like you said, Fortnite or uh, shout out to EA, which is right down the road with uh, all of their great products. So I think that we are going to see, hopefully, fingers crossed, we're actually going to Raleigh in a couple of weeks to an eSports conference. Our team's on the road once a month on average at major conferences around the world. Um, Jordan just got back from Birmingham in the UK, and we'll head to Leaders in London again this fall. But um, we're seeing a little bit of a bounce back on major events. Um, but at the same time, Full Sail, you know, shout out to the, to the awesome team there at Full Sail, who it feels like is hosting a major tournament every week. So we were just there for NACE uh, over the weekend, and they did a great job with their uh, NAIA uh, college championships. So I think at the high school level, college, um, I think a little bit more organization. It's, um, it's sort of what they're experiencing in pickleball. There are a lot of uh, leagues um, almost if you have kids in cheerleading, same thing, a lot of uh, governing bodies, you know, and, and I think you've got um, where in certain sports, it's, it's very streamlined. You know exactly, you're working with AAU, then you're working with the NCA, then you're working with, you know, the major league itself, or the national governing body of sport, uh, if it's an Olympic sport. So I think we need still a little bit more time um, for esports to evolve and develop, and for some of those associations to either merge together or to figure out exactly what the hierarchy is going to be, so that when we're bidding on products and we're looking, you know, a year, two years, five years out, um, they're going to be a sustainable. And also, um, you see this in esports, which is the um, uh, the um, titles they're called, so the games themselves, whether it's 2K or whatever the product is, is you hope that if you're bidding on something two years away, that the game is still popular. And that becomes a bit of an issue too, is like if the popularity wanes, then sometimes you don't have the excitement around and we don't get the numbers. And then Guy calls me and says, why do we spend all that money? And we, we do all those kinds of things. But um, I, I do think, I, I think the, the future is incredibly bright. Congrats on starting your business. But uh, I think uh, it, it's, there's, there's some great stuff on the horizon. Hey, Jason. John, good to, see you on, good to see you on your board. Get to see some of the reports and some of the numbers. And I'm, I need clarification, but I wanted to share. Orange County Convention Center, volleyball, what was the volume of the number of teams that were in that tournament? And then on a side note, Guy might answer this. What's the, like the largest, what's in a big, huge soccer tournament? What's the volume of numbers that come to these kinds of traveling parent, bring their kids out tournaments? Volleyball just blew me away with the numbers that you shared. Yeah, so uh, Orange County Convention Center, which is going to add square footage and put another $500 million into their uh, venue, uh, we host the largest volleyball tournament in the world. Um, AAU headquartered here um, does their volleyball championships. I know there's a lot of volleyball families in the crowd. Um, over 5,300 teams 
um, 200,000 hotel rooms, $250 million in economic impact. Um, it is just wall to wall, and of course, you, you, you know, we've got 150, 160,000 hotel rooms regionally, and uh, so they're eating up a lot of uh, inventory at, at, you know, a great time of year, but um, um, not to be, you know, left out of the conversation. I mean, our ECNL uh, soccer uh, girls and boys here in Orlando, in uh, Seminole County, um, 14,000 rooms. Um, a big, you know, so these youth tournaments are growing. I, I wouldn't be shocked if volleyball is at, uh, you know, 6,000 teams, ECNL continues to grow, um, which is why, I mean, we're really excited not to get overly political, Guy and Danny and our friends here in the room, but we're really excited about the um, tourism district and some of the conversations that are happening in Seminole County, investment, reinvestment in venues. Um, expansion. We know that our um, our resident base keeps growing, and uh, certainly there's a, a need residents, whether it's little league or travel ball or whatever the case may be. You know, emerging of the two to be able to have more soccer pitches, be able to accommodate more visitation, and at the same time, you know, take care of our growing resident base as well. But um, no, thank you for for mentioning that, and thanks for all you do for our community, John, Seminole State. Hi, Jason. Ken Countess with Ken is email. Thanks for a I great can. presentation, and that opening video was really terrific. Um, I uh, was a baseball, major league baseball fan in my youth. Youth was a long time ago, but I've been here Me in too. Orlando 20 years. And I'm uh, looking for, uh, to find out, is there any real legitimate progress on bringing Major League Baseball to the Orlando area? Oh, I see the answer already. No, sir. And it breaks my heart. I'm uh, um, born and raised in Philadelphia and diehard baseball fan, and I, I, I don't see it on the horizon. Obviously, when uh, Orange County was taking a look at the use of and ex uh, the spending of uh, the TDT dollars, whether it's a billion, a billion and a half, two billion dollars, um, based on the TDT collection uh, that's expected over the next five to ten years. Uh, you know, great presentations um, from Pat Williams and 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 his Dreamers team, and I, you're not even seeing progress right now. Actually, you're not seeing progress in Salt Lake and Nashville and some Charlotte and some of the cities that were rumored. Um, it's got quiet. It's gotten quiet again. So I'm not sure. Um, where their commissioner, um, and we know those folks, we actually just saw them at, uh, at the uh, spring training. Uh, uh, they do an event uh, to welcome all the Florida teams to the state of Florida, and we just saw the commissioner. Um, hard to say where they are as a league and moving forward. Um, I'd be really interested to see what happens with uh, the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, you know, there was some jockeying there over, you know, do they stay, will they move? Um, but even if they move, you've got relocation fees, you've got to have a certain, you know, season ticket base. Um, you have to have a stadium, you have to have a place to play. Um, look what's happening now. There's some real issues between Oakland and Las Vegas for the A's. Um, so I think the amount of um, uh, hurdles that you've got to jump through in order to make that happen could be more than what you know we're, we're able to do here in our community. But um, I mean, hey, fingers crossed. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's too long a trip to go to Miami, and and, and even St. Pete, you know, is an extra you know couple of minutes on the road, you know, past Tampa to go watch them play. But I, I don't know. I don't think in the near future. We have time for one more. I'm here for you. So sticking with Major League Baseball, uh, is there any chance spring training might return to Central Florida? I was kind of heartbroken to see the local teams leave over the last couple of years. Yeah, no, it, it, it's a great question. Um, I think I'd be kind of a little out of my lane to speak on behalf of Disney, um, so I won't, um, which is politically a really important thing to do. Um, uh, so, so I'm just going to hang tight and, uh, and not, not speak on their behalf. Um, but, but 
it, right interest, right, that we, 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 we had a good run and, um, and certainly Angela Suggs and the team at the Florida Sports Foundation and, and you know, our, our friends in Tallahassee do a great job promoting um, our, uh, our spring uh, league here. Uh, but uh, hard to say, hard to say. I mean, the, the, you know, most of those teams have found new homes. Um, and between here and Arizona, you've got, uh, the, you know, you've got all, everybody kind of in place. At the same time, you don't know what leases are up. You don't know what relationships are dwindling. You don't know what could be on the horizon. Again, same issue is where would you play? And, and you know, ultimately, um, can you find a home or a venue that would support um, that ecosystem for those, you know, uh, pitchers and catchers in February and then the month of March? Um, I, I don't know. Nothing. Nothing uh, is. It, I'm not hearing any whispering right now. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you all. Thank you so much, Jason. We really appreciate you and your team's time and all you're helping Seminole County do and all the people that you guys bring to our amazing hotels. Shout out to those several hotel owners. Thanks for listening. To learn more about the Seminole County Chamber, please visit SeminoleBusiness.org or check us out on our social media at Seminole County Chamber.